Hello friends. So today what we're going to do is go over a little bit more algorithmic practice. We've been going through data structures and things over the last couple of days, but I made a couple of videos with some different algorithms. So uh, for probably this weekend, I'll just be uploading a couple of algorithm videos just to kind of take a step back from our playlist of uh, the basic programmatic skills playlist where we've been going through link lists and data structures and big O and a lot of like kind of abstractions. So it's fun to just do uh, some algorithms and just keep the blade sharp. So today what we're going to be doing is looking at uh, memoization and Fibonacci. So let's get into it. So memoization and Fibonacci, the objective is we want to write an algorithm that returns a Fibonacci number at a spec specified index. The function should take in uh, an index and later using memoization a cache. So that sounds easy enough, but let's take a look at the specifics. So what is Fibonacci? Um, Fibonacci, and I just wrote this little snarky thing, is basically like a set of numbers that spiral out whenever it's graphed. Uh, it's cool and it looks cool and some prog rock bands use it to write riffs and stuff, but let's look at Wikipedia which uh, is better at explaining this than I am. So if you look at the Fibonacci sequence of numbers, uh, basically right here, let's look right here, um, the, the numbers start out at zero and one. If you add those together, you get one. If you add one and one together, you get two. Two and one, three. Three and two, five. Five and three, eight. Eight and five, 13. 13 and eight, 21. 21 and 13, 34. And it just spirals out. If you can see on a graph here, it starts like this and it spirals out. Now, when you're looking at this, you'll see that basically this would be like a perfect time to use recursion because we're, we're basically calculating the output of if we had a function, it would output maybe this and this, and then we would just add those outputs together and output this and then that. So you could recursively call a function to get this done. However, doing that without using memoization would lead to having a recursive calling function that is very non-performant, and that's what we're mainly focusing on today in this. So let's look at what memoization is. Uh, what is memoization? Memoization is the process of caching numbers that we've already calculated to make our algorithm more performant. When using memorization, we'll, memoization, not memorization, but memoization, we will pass in a cache of already computed numbers on each of the recursive calls. This means that we will only have to calculate those numbers one time instead of n times, making our algorithm O of n or linear instead of O of 2 to the n. So how to use memoization to calculate the Fibonacci numbers. Basically, the steps in our algorithm that we want to take is we want to check to see if the numbers already exist in the cache. If the number is in the cache, we want to use that number. If the number isn't in the cache, we want to calculate it, put it in the cache, so it can be used multiple times in the future. So let's code it out. But what I'm going to do here is I'll write, basically I'll write the recursive, uh, recursive version that is, um, that, that's non-performant. So this would be the uh, big O of eh, big O of two to the n. Uh, this would be that version, and then down here, we'll, this will be the linear version of just big O of n. So let's write out the non-performant version first. So we'll just have a function, and we'll just call it fib for Fibonacci because who wants to spell that? Um, so fib is going to take in basically instead of taking in a cache. At first, we just want to take in an index number, right? So basically up here in our Fibonacci sequence, if we were like, well, I want to calculate you know, where this eight is, so it would be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it would really be six because at zero would be, there's an implied zero right there. So zero and one, so it would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we entered in six here as our index, we would want to get eight. So, and, and when you're writing something recursively, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around because there's really not a lot of code there. Um, when, whenever you're writing a recursive function, you want to first define your base case. So we want to return here. And if you look at the Fibonacci up here, um, if you look at 0, 1, and 2, we would just return 1 at any of those indexes because 0, 1, and 2 on the index would just return 1. So what we want to do here is we... And we don't want we don't want to enter in a zero at all. We want to actually enter in an index that is like one or more. So what we'll do here is we'll write an, an if statement here. We'll write if index is less than three. So if it's less than three, we just want to return one. So that's our base case in our in our uh, our algorithm our recursive call. So else here, and this is where we want to actually make our recursive call. We'll just return 
fib at index minus one plus fib at index eh, minus two. Okay, two, there we go. So if we run this, we'll console log fib at uh, six, because remember we said that we would get that eight if we ran fib at six. So we'll just go control tilde to open up our integrated terminal. And this is the, this is, like I said, this is just the O of, of uh, two to the N solution. So this is really not performant and very slow. You should never write it like this. You would want to use the minimization, but I'm just showing you how to write it because to show you what not to do basically. So right here we would run node fib js and we would get one right here because of course we would get one because we're saying if index is greater than three, we really want it to be if index is less than three. So there's a little mistake. So we get the eight right there. So let's say that we entered in seven right here, we should get 13, right? So if we uh, save that, should get 13. Uh, if we enter in eight, we should get 21, save it. 21. Now, this is so slow that if I entered in something like 40 uh, right here, it would my computer would the the runtime would just crash like it would just hang. So you don't want to do that. It's so slow that you can only calculate Fibonacci up to like I don't know, maybe I could do it up to 20. Let's see here. 20. Yeah, it does that. Now let's see if we can I don't I don't want to go super high because I don't want anything to get locked up. Just trust me in this saying that this is extremely unperformant. So now let's use memoization to try and figure out how we can cache these numbers because really what you're doing here every time is you're calculating this and this on every call. So every time that index is changed, you're having to do these different calculations every single time until you reach your base case. So what that's going to do is make your algorithm extremely unperformant. So what we would want is to be like, well, if we've already calculated index minus two, we can just put that in a cache somewhere to use later. And then it would, it would put our number at an O of n time complexity, our algorithm at an O of n time complexity, which is something that we would want. So let's move this down here and then let's make another function right here. And we'll just call this fib memo, uh, memo for memoized. Uh, cause who wants to write those words out? So first thing we'll pass in here is, is an index, but we're also going to pass in a cache right here. Now, when we first start our algorithm, we won't have a cache passed in. There won't be one. So we'll have to create one. So be, remember this function is going to be called recursively. So on the first call, it's not going to have a cache. So we'll go cache. We'll set it up here. We'll go cache equals cache or an empty array. So that'll set it up as an empty array on our first call. So now we want to write an if statement here and it's very much like it's, it's a little bit different. So we'll go uh, different than the other function that we wrote. So we'll go if cache of index. So if there is, uh, if it's already been calculated that number, we just want to return cache at index. So if it's there, we want to return it basically. Um, so one of, one of the ideas, let me, let me do it like this. I don't like writing one line return statements like that. So let's go up here. So we have our if there. So now we have to have our else. And this would be this would be the meat of the algorithm where we would use our base case and our, recur our recursive call. So basically on this, we're just saying, hey, if there's a number already in the cache that, that uh, matches what we're making our recursive call to, we'll just return that number. We'll just use that number. Um, in our else statement right here, this is where we want to write our base case. So we'll say if index is less than three, this is very much the same as the other. We'll just return one. And then here we'll go else. And in this else, this is where we'll make our actual recursive call, but it's a little bit different. We'll go cache at index because we're not actually returning anything here, unlike the other one. We'll go cache at index equals fib memo. Uh, can I write that out properly? Fib memo at index minus one plus, and then it would do, uh, oh yeah, but we need to pass in, pass in the cache right here because the cache is already going to be set up if this is one of the recursive calls. So then we'll go fib memo right here and we'll pass in index minus two and pass in the cache. So each time that we're calling it, we're, we're passing in the cache. In our return statement that we want to make down here, we just want to return cache at the index. 
because we're going to find the index at some point in the way that we're caching this. So let's go down here and we'll, we'll run the same ones. We'll go six, but this will be fib memo. Fib memo at six should give us eight and it doesn't, what's wrong? Cache is not defined because I spelled it the way that it sounds. <laughs> Cache. Okay, so we'll go down here, we'll run it again. And we do get the eight. Now let's try it at the seven. And if we look at our Fibonacci numbers, we should get 13, 21, and 32. So seven, eight, 21, and then nine should be 32, or 34. Oh, I'm, I added wrong here. Yeah, that should be 34. Because 21 plus 13 equals 34 instead of 32. I added it up wrong when I was writing it down. Um, now let's do it at 20. And you can see there's no lag. It just comes up with it. Now let's do it at 30. And again, this is this is way more than we were able to do last time. And let's do it 40, which would normally crash crash my uh, crash my my runtime on my uh, on my system. But now we can calculate it out. And you can see that this number gets quick quickly spirals out into a huge number here. So the the gap between 30 and 40, you go from uh, 832,000 to like, uh, what is this? Like, I guess 10 million or something like that. So it, the, the numbers do become exponentially bigger at some point. They literally spiral out like on a graph. So with this second version, the memoized version, we can calculate up very large numbers fairly effectively. But with this version, if we didn't use memoization, basically it would be so non-performant that it would just hang if we if we start trying to calculate anything over like the 40th index it would just it would just hang so um yeah that's a little bit about memoization and about recursion uh recursion is is uh, pretty tricky to get your head around when you first start doing it but the more that you practice on it little problems like this the more that you actually understand what's going on it can become a very powerful tool in your tool belt in solving algorithms so um, yeah, I hope this helped. We're gonna get back to doing data structures probably uh, tomorrow or maybe the next day. We'll be moving on to stacks and queues and things like that. But I just thought it would be cool to take the foot off the gas and make small little algorithmic videos this, this weekend uh, while I'm just chilling, you know? So I hope that helped. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, and uh, yeah, hope this helped. Take it easy.